So where do you check and change your industry? Well, the first chance is when you're setting up an entity. But then once you've created your entity, if you want to change it or have opted not to select an industry when you set it up, you can go and change it under entity settings. So make sure you're in the correct entity that you want to go change it for. Click on options and then entity. And you'll see the first part here under general settings has industry. So here, instead of being an accounting service, we could go and change it to a bakery over here. So manufacturing and selling other bakery products. So we're going to click on save. And now when we go back to our benchmarking section, so analyze benchmark financial, now we'll see that it's comparing us to bakery product manufacturing peers. So we can always see what industry we're in over here and how many entities it's comparing us to. You can also go and change it to the sector and you'll note that it broadens it. Now we're looking at manufacturing peers or we could go look at the precise industry and now it's manufacturing and selling other bakery products. So this is a good way to see what industry you've selected and to go and see how that rolls up into the broad industry or sector. And again, if you are not happy with this and you'd like to change it, you can always go and do that under options, entity settings. And over here, you can just go and choose whichever one makes sense to you. You'll just start typing whatever you want and it'll give you the relevant options. Don't forget to click save once you've gone and updated it so that those changes pull through to the benchmark. There are two different benchmarks available on SIFT. We have the financial benchmark and the activity benchmark. So let's take a look at the financial benchmark. So firstly, you can tell how many entities you're benchmarking against by looking at this line over here. And here we can see you're comparing with 20 plus bakeries in our country. So the benchmark is going to be comparing your entity to other entities on SIFT that have the same industry and are in the same country. And you can always see how many there are over here. We can go and look at various different metrics. So here you'll see we have profitability and liquidity metrics. And within this table, we can see the metric, our entity's value for that metric, the industry metric. We can go and see the variance and the variance percentage. And then we can see how we're performing as compared to the industry. So are we outperforming or are we trailing or are we underperforming? And so this can give you an indication as to how the business is performing as compared to others in the industry. We could go and look at the broad industry, which we're looking at now. We could go and expand it to look at a wider set of companies by clicking on sector. And you'll see if I click on sector, it will reload the page. And now we're looking at 210 manufacturing peers and all of the metrics will update. So here we can see again our entity as compared to the sector and whether we're outperforming or underperforming the sector. You could also go look at the precise industry if you wanted to zoom in and look at a smaller group and see how you're comparing to others in the same precise industry as you are. You're also able to benchmark yourself against other entities within your organization. So here I could go and benchmark against all my USD entities or selected USD entities. And if I select those entities, I can then select which entities I want to go and benchmark against. So let's just go and select a few of those entities and then I can click run. And now you'll see that we again have our entity as compared to our peers, but in this case, it's the peers we've selected within our organization. So if you are a franchisor or have lots of franchisees on your SIFT organization, this could be a really great way to benchmark one of the franchisees against their peers. Or if you're in accounting practice and have lots of dentists as your clients, you can then come here and benchmark one of your clients as compared to all the other dentists that you have on your SIFT organization. So that's just another option. I'm going to go back to the sector and let's explore what we can do with this button. So over here, we can go choose whether we want to compare ourselves to the top 25%, the middle 50% or the bottom 25% of the sector broad industry or precise industry and this is useful because say you have a client that's relatively new they might want to start by comparing themselves to the bottom 25 percent and when they do that they might see that they're actually ahead or outperforming except in a few areas and then they can go and focus on those areas so how can we improve our operating expense ratio or how can we improve our debtors days? And once they are outperforming the bottom 25% of the sector, we could then go and compare them to the middle 50%. And here we could see that compared to those slightly more successful businesses, those slightly larger businesses, 
we are trailing in a few more areas. So now we can go work on the net profit margin, the operating expense ratio, and our data stays. And then finally, what we're aiming for, we wanna be in the top 25% of the sector, but you'll see we are trailing in many more areas. And so we can then work on those. So you can take your clients on a journey towards that top 25% by working on the areas where they are trailing. So let's go back to the middle 50% and consider some of the ways we could use this information. Well, to start, we can see that our operating expense ratio is much higher than others in our area. And so this would get me thinking that we need to go see how we can reduce our expenses. If others in the industry are able to reduce their expenses to only 44%, well then maybe we could look at new suppliers, we could try and reduce see what our top costs are and go and reduce those in some way. Perhaps we could automate more aspects. We're not yet sure what the answer is, but we definitely know that others are achieving a lower operating expense ratio. So we should look into achieving that as well. The same goes for data days. We'll see that others in our industry are only giving customers 7.8 days to pay, but we're giving customers 42 days to pay. And so it seems that the industry norm is actually for a much quicker payment turnaround time. And so we can then go and request that from our clients and say, listen, the industry actually gives you only about 7.8 days to pay. So you need to start paying us earlier. And that could assist with our cash flow and all the other items. So that's how I would go and use this benchmark financial information. And, and this is within the table view, but you can also look at this in a line or a bar graph. And if we go look at it in a line graph we'll be able to go and see these metrics over time and this is really useful because you can see how you're trending as compared to the industry so you're not just looking at one month or one quarter's data you're looking at it over time and here you can also see seasonality so it seems that the industry doesn't actually have a level of seasonality but at some points we're performing far below the industry and other times we're performing far above so that can give us a better indication as to how we're performing over the long run and again can help us improve and we can go and look at this per metric so here we're looking at total income let's maybe go look at those debtors days we're looking at again it seems that the industry has a very low debtors days consistently but ours seems to change and so that's something that we should look into this is also useful if you have a level of seasonality in your business so say you're selling ice cream and you expect that in the colder months your sales will drop and in the hotter months it will increase well then you'll be able to see that seasonality in this graph and see if the industry is also experiencing that seasonality again here you can choose whether you want to compare yourself to the sector or the broad industry and which part of that sector or broad industry you want to compare yourself the same applies with the bar graph here we can go and see the difference between um, the broad industry and the entity so let's go back to that total income and so here we'll be able to see how the entity is performing over time as compared to the industry and so again these views here are really helpful in giving you a bigger picture to see how you're performing over time and if there are any elements of that seasonality that you can perhaps plan for the last thing to mention for benchmark financial is just that you have the option to benchmark over time so here we're looking at monthly information for march but we could go and benchmark ourselves in february and we might notice that these metrics change because perhaps we didn't perform as well in different months that's something that we are able to see very easily on these two graphs but we can go and see how these metrics change over time we could also go look at a bigger picture so here we could go look at annual previous 12 months and so this can give us a better picture as to how we're performing over the long run as compared to others in our industry so that's how you can use the financial section it's really helping you see how your company or your client's company is performing compared to others in the industry and my suggestion is that you use this as a tool to help identify where you can improve compared to others in the industry what you can change in order to move from perhaps that part, bottom 25% of the industry to ultimately be outperforming in everything in the top 25% of your industry The second option under benchmark is activity and this works in much the same way as financials except that it focuses on activity metrics rather than financial metrics so here we're going to compare our activity metrics which you can see over here as compared to the industry metrics or if you select over the options over here within my organization you can go and compare it to other entities that you have within your sift organization 
So these metrics include how customers are interacting with your business or how many new customers you've been able to get, how many active customers you have. It also looks at sales metrics. So what are the sales? How much is outstanding? What's the average customer spend? What's the median customer spend? And how many discounts have you given to your customers as compared to the industry? And then we also look at the product information. So what was the quantity of products sold and the average products per purchase? As with the financial section, we can see who we are comparing ourselves to over here. So we're looking at 30 other entities and we can also go and change the period we're looking at at the top here and we can go look at the month of March instead. And now we can go and see whether we're outperforming or underperforming as compared to our industry. As with financials, we can go and consider if we want to look at the sector or if we want to go look at the broad industry or precise industry. And when, then we can go and compare ourselves to the bottom 25%, middle 50%, or even the top 25%. And you'll note that if I go from middle 50% to top 25%, there are a lot more items in which we are not outperforming or ahead. And so how would we go and use this table? Well, I would go and consider where we are underperforming as compared to others. So here it seems that the average customer spend is far below and the unique products or average products per purchase is low. So it seems that others in our industry are able to get customers to spend more each time they come and to buy more products. So we should consider how we can do the same. Perhaps we can offer bundles where, you know, if you buy three cupcakes, you get another one for free and we can try and increase the purchase um, we can look at other initiatives but it seems that others in the industry are able to do that and we are not and so this is how we can go and use this tool we also have the option to look at this in terms of a line graph and again here we can go and look at how we're performing as compared to the sector over time so we can see that for the most part we're underperforming but something happened in january and we far outperformed them when it came to this metric of new customers and we can go and look at the other metrics and see again how we're performing so it seems like we were underperforming and again something happened in december or january that helped us start outperforming and so we can go and consider what happened and how we can make sure that continues or repeat it to improve this. So you can go look at any of these metrics. You can choose how many periods you'd like to look at this for. You can go and change whether you're looking at the sector or the precise industry, which segment of that, and whether you want to compare yourself to the bottom, middle, or top 25%. And so again, this active customers here, I can see that we had far fewer active customers and then we're able to increase that and be almost double the industry. So that's definitely looking positive, but we need to make sure we continue that. Again, this line and bar graph gives you a view of seasonality. So it seems that the industry does have a dip normally in July, and we also saw that in our business, but that's something that we maybe, you know, cannot worry too much about because it is seasonal, but we should at least try to be at the same level as there. So the decrease is acceptable, but we need to get our um, active customers up to the industry. So that's how I would use this benchmark activity section. Let's quickly just look at what the bar graph looks like. You can use it in much the same way as the line graph. It's just giving you a different view and it's nice because it has those data tags. So we can also see exactly how much the entity or the sector sold in each period.